In our local galactic neighbourhood, just 300 light years away, lies a planet that's been dubbed Earth 2.0. Let's find out more, shall we? I'm not going to ask you to subscribe on the basis of just one video, but if you enjoy this one, then why not take a look at a couple more? And if you like those too, then why not then think about subscribing? Thank you. Kepler 1649 is an M-type red dwarf star. It's found near the constellation of Cygnus, but is far too dim to be seen even with a pair of binoculars. Red dwarfs are the most common type of star in the universe, accounting for about 75% of all stars. This one has a mass of about 21% of our Sun and 25% of its radius. Stars of this type typically have luminosities somewhere between 0.22 and 0.5% of that of our Sun, so they put out much, much less light. But let's continue. Because this star is a red dwarf, the habitable zone is very close to the star. There are different ways of working out habitable zones for stars, but one measure will put the habitable zone between 8.5 million kilometres and roughly 18 million kilometres from the star. The habitable zone being so close to the star may cause additional problems for any planets, but more about that in a little bit. This star has two planets that we know of, and both of them orbit very close in. The first and closest in is called Kepler 1649b. This orbits at a distance from the star of 7.7 .7 million kilometres, orbiting in a little over eight and a half days. The orbit of this planet is just past the inner range of the habitable zone. In fact, using a different measure of its habitable zone would actually put it just within the habitable zone of this star. Kepler 1649b is 1.08 times the radius of the Earth, and it has 1.3 times our planet's mass. This means that Kepler 1649b is most likely to be a rocky planet. Even though its star is much less luminous than our Sun, the planet is very close, and as such may be constantly subjected to lethal levels of radiation. Red dwarf stars also tend to be flare stars. This means that they flare frequently and violently. This may have stripped Kepler 1649b of any atmosphere, leaving it a barren rock. If we leave our space and time ship, we can see the star. We may even notice that it doesn't move in the sky. There is a possibility that due to the proximity of the star, that this planet is tidally locked permanently showing the same face to its sun. There may, however, be a possibility that Kepler 1649b does still have an atmosphere. If this is the case, we may find a planet very similar to Venus with a runaway greenhouse effect and a very toxic and cloud-filled atmosphere. Fortunately, our spacesuit is invulnerable to these harsh conditions, so we can still get out and have a look round. We won't want to spend too long here though. And this planet isn't really the reason we came here. The other planet is much more interesting. Let's go and have a look at that. This second planet, designated Kepler 1649c, orbits the star at a distance of 9.7 million kilometers, with a year that lasts about 19 and a half Earth days. Excitingly, this places the planet slap bang within the habitable zone for this star. In fact, this planet would receive about 75% of the light that the Earth receives from our Sun. This second planet has 1.06 times the radius of the Earth, so virtually the exact same size. It also has 1.2 times the mass. This again means that it's likely to be a rocky world. Similar to its closer sister planet, Kepler 1649c may have had its atmosphere stripped away by the harsh radiation from the parent star. However, if it hasn't, it is in the right zone for maybe liquid water to exist on the surface. Let's pay it a visit and see what we can find out. Maybe there are oceans and lakes on this planet. Life as we know it would find it hard to develop here because of the extreme radiation from the star. But that's just life as we know it. Maybe if life has developed here, 
it would have evolved protections from the radiation or may have evolved in places where the radiation isn't as strong. If we look to the sky, even though the star is much smaller than our sun, we are much closer in than we would be here on Earth, and so the sun hangs large in the sky, being about twice the size of our sun. The other body that we can see isn't a moon. Due to the compact nature of this entire solar system, this is the other planet. At its closest it would look about two-thirds the size of the full moon, but then it is only two million kilometres away, and that's actually only about five times as far as the moon is from the Earth. As exciting as it is to walk around on an alien world, especially one as potentially similar to the Earth as this one, we must make our way back to our space time machine, pausing to have one last look and maybe take a rock as a souvenir of our time here. And until next time we don our spacesuits and go off in search of adventure, thank you for watching.